Hello my beautiful book besties. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Delaney if you are new here and today we're going to be talking about the books that I want to read for the rest of 2024. As crazy as it is, we have officially passed the mid-year point in the year. So I've been like reflecting on all the books I've read, like the mid-year book tag and all of that stuff, super fun. And I've been getting really excited for the second half of 2024 and all the books that I know I have yet to read that are on my TBR. So I picked out 15, I believe, of the top books that I really, really want to get to this year. And please just know that there are a million books that I really want to get to but these are 15 that like really stand out to me that I know I want to read like ASAP. So we're going to be starting with those and see where it takes us. There's also going to be a little bit of wiggle room with like the 15 number because some of these are the beginning books in a series and like obviously if I start a series and I enjoy it I'm going to want to finish the series too. So give or take about 15 books that I know are on my TBR for the rest of 2024. All right, we all know I could sit here and talk all day long, but since there's 15 books I want to talk about, let's get started. So first I have You With A View and I really, really want to read this romance. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it and I'm hoping to read this during the summertime. I just feel like it gives like summery energy just looking at it. I don't entirely know what it's about, but I've heard really phenomenal things, like I said, so I'm excited for this. Oh my gosh, this says two former high school enemies must reunite for a road trip inspired by their grandparents' broken engagement. That sounds so good. I am very excited. Then I have Here One Moment by Lane Moriarty, and this is actually her new book. It doesn't come out until October, I believe. September. I'm wrong. September 10th. I believe this is about like people knowing their future about like their death and if they're willing to tempt fate. It reminds me a lot of the Measure, which I read last month, and if so, if you've read that book, it feels very similar. I can't fully confirm because I obviously haven't read this one yet, but it feels kind of like a similar premise. And it says, a brilliantly constructed tale that looks at free will and destiny, grief and love, and the endless struggle to remain certainty and control in an uncertain world. I don't know, this just sounds really great to me. Definitely one that is on my priority TBR list. I'm thinking like early fall, it kind of gives like early fall vibes. I don't know why I think that, but I'm very excited. Next, I have Lovely War, and I think this is a young adult historical fiction romance, I believe. All I know is that Destiny Sidwell read this in one of her videos and she gave it five stars. And anything that does gives five stars, I immediately am intrigued by. So. I ordered this immediately after her video and it got delivered and added to my TBR cart and definitely one that I'm hoping to get to probably again in this like fall season. Then I have Caravel or Caravel, however you say it. I am so desperately trying to become a fantasy reader. If you follow me, you know I talk about it all the time. But I've heard great things about this series for like beginner fantasy readers and I really want to read the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, but so many people have told me to read this trilogy first. So definitely on my priority TBR because I'm dying to get to Once Upon a Broken Heart, but I've heard good things about this as well. So hopefully soon I will finally be tackling the Caravel series. Can you comment and tell me if it's Caravel or Caravel? I am so confused every time I try to say it and I just know I'm saying it wrong. Watch, it's not pronounced either of those ways and I'm just wrong all around. Next, I have Darling Girls, and this is actually the UK cover because my best friend went to London and brought back the most fun book covers that we don't have here in the US. So this is one of them, and I'm so excited to read this book. This is another one I've heard really good things about, and I think it's kind of like a general fiction with thriller elements. So sounds right up my alley, and I'm super excited. Next, I have two Kristen Hanna books. So I really want to read The Great Alone. Someone told me that this book is best read in the winter. So I'm going to trust your word and read this towards the end of the year, I think. But again, this is one that has been on my TBR for so long, and I've been procrastinating it. But ever since reading The Nightingale, it's definitely been more on my radar. So I want to get to this one soon. And then The Women. I have heard the best things about this book, like truly the best of the best. This is the one new release this year that I've heard like zero negative feedback on. So I'm very intrigued. Everyone says that they like this book as much or maybe even more than The Nightingale, which is like the biggest compliment that I think you can give a book. So I hear you. You have convinced me. I own it. It's just a matter of getting to it now. And I have Krista and Becca Ritchie's new release and that is Dishonestly Yours. If you know me, you know the Addicted Calloway series is my entire heart and soul. It's my favorite book series of all time. I love those characters. I love Krista and Becca Ritchie's writing and I'm so darn excited to get to this new release. It sounds like it's more of like a gripping, twisted type of romance rather than like 
the high society addicted world. So I'm curious to see how they write that and where they take this. I'm very, very excited. Then I have Wild Love by Elsie Silver and I just recently finished the Chestnut Spring series and I flew through the final like four, three or four books in that series. So I'm very, very excited. I've been definitely on an Elsie Silver kick and I've heard really good things about this one. I'm not typically a billionaire romance fan, but I love Elsie Silver's writing. So I'm hoping that I can really get behind this one. It's also best friend's little sister. So like a best friend sibling romance, which I think is kind of fun as well. Or I guess like brother's best friend as well. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just know that Willa from the Chestnut Spring series is one of my favorite characters of all time and this follows her brother. So enough said. That's all you have to say to convince me. Say anything is related to Willa and I'm there. I adore her. Then I have The Last Letter by Rebecca Yaros. Again, heard nothing nothing but phenomenal things. Some people in my Patreon book club said that, like this is their top read of the year, their top romance book suggestion, their top five star read. Like I made a post about I think asking for five star read suggestions and so many people said this book and I've also heard it'll make me cry. So that's an added bonus. I like books that will make me cry. I do. Then a big goal of mine is the Boys of Tommen series. Binding 13 is actually on my TBR for this month. So fingers crossed that I can stick to that and get to it. This book is long and the font is small. So say a prayer for me. I might be reading mostly on my Kindle when I read this, maybe even some audio as well. Haven't entirely decided, but this is a series that I've heard a lot of people say that if you like Addicted Calloway, you'll love this series. And I sure do. I love Addicted Calloway. I love Magnolia Parks. I love those like character driven series. And I'm very excited for Boys of Tommen. I've been hesitant because I think they're high schoolers and I typically don't like the younger romances, but everyone that I've said that to has like confirmed that it doesn't feel super young and they feel the same way, but like this series has been wonderful. So very intrigued, a little scared, but also excited. Now we're on the topic of being scared and excited. Yep. 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 I'm pretty sure I said I was going to read this by the end of 2023. I'm pretty sure this was on my TBR in 2022 even. Yeah, we will get there one day or another, hopefully by the end of the year. I think this will depend on how Caravel goes because if I get sucked into that universe, I'm gonna wanna binge those fantasies and might not get to Akatar, but we shall see. It is ambitious, but I'm hoping to at least read the first book. Then I have Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan, and this is another one that I've heard really great things about. I actually started this a few months ago and I just wasn't in a good reading headspace. I think I was in a reading slump. So I like soft DNF'd it, but it wasn't the book. It was fully a me problem and I was aware of that at the time. So I have had full intentions to circle back and read this book. And I think it was Madison Kate, I think just read this in one of her vlogs and she was annotating it. Anything she annotates is like the most aesthetically pleasing and she can convince me to read pretty much anything just by posting a picture of her annotation. So Madison, if you see this, you are my inspiration with how beautiful your annotations are and you inspired me to get back to reading this book. Then I have Love Redesigned and I really want to read this but I haven't solely because I don't know if I need to read Dreamland Billionaires first and I have Dreamland Billionaires back on my shelf but it just hasn't appealed to me. I've heard really like hot and cold things and I know I need to just read it and form my own opinions but this series for some reason intrigues me more than the Dreamland Billionaires but I haven't been totally sure if they're entirely separate or if I should read them in order. So I've hold off, held off altogether, but hoping to get to this one. If I decide that I need to read Dreamland Billionaires first, then I will start with that. And The Fine Print, I think is book number one. But if I decide I can read them separately, I'm definitely starting with this series and jumping into Love Redesigned. Last but not least, I have A Man Called Uva, I think is how I've been told you say it. I get corrected every time I say it, so I'm hoping I'm saying it right this time. But I soft DNF this book in one of my vlogs. I think it was like reading books that have been on my TBR the longest. I'm pretty sure that's it. Like reading the books I've been avoiding reading. And as you can tell, it's still sitting on my TBR. This is probably the book that has been on my TBR the most long, the most long, the longest. This and Akatar, I feel like have just been taunting me, sitting on my TBR, staring at me. I need to get to it. Like I really, I need to just do it. I've heard really good things. When I started it, I just wasn't connecting and I wasn't feeling it, but I knew it was so loved. So I was like, I want to read this book at a time where I feel like I'm enjoying it. And I was already getting bored. And then I was resentful 
at the book that it was boring me. It just was a whole thing. So I decided to soft DNF it, but I want to circle back before the end of the year. All right, you guys, that was short and sweet. I hope I didn't blab too much about those books. I really can't blab about the books on my TBR because I don't even know anything about them yet. So that's a perk to the TBR videos because if I have read a book and I love a book, I will not shut up about it. But if I haven't read it yet, then we can like keep it pretty quick, keep it moving. But those are some of the top books on my TBR for the rest of the year. Leave a comment down below telling me some of your priority reads that you want to get to in 2024. That is all for today's video. Make sure you are subscribed and following me on all the things. Join the book club if you want to. Everything is always in the description. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye with besties. Ow.